It's always nice to, to see your, your nice ocean out in front here. And uh, took a quick tour through the uh, facility. Uh, you guys are doing a good job here. Well, we're going to talk about how smart are octopuses. And uh, uh, well, one other thing is, uh, why don't you hold questions until the last, until after I finish my formal presentation here. And uh, the first question will undoubtedly be uh, octopuses or octopi. And uh, I'll get to that in just a minute, if I can figure out how to do this. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Dr. Roland Anderson. I was at the aquarium actually for 33 years. Um, I have many published papers on octopuses and other marine animals. And uh, you can find uh, uh, these usually on, on the internet. And if you can find a title, uh, send me an email and uh, I'll send it to you if I have it in a PDF. Uh, I was telling Kristen that I, I recently published a paper on uh, human recognition by octopuses. And uh, octopuses can recognize individual humans, and uh, I do have that on a PDF. So if you're interested in that, uh, send me an email at gooeyduck46 at gmail.com. 46, because I was born in 46. Well, some of the things that I'm going to be talking about, um, spelling of the plural, as I said, that's the, uh, the, one of the most often asked questions. I'm going to talk about species, uh, the range. I'm mostly going to be talking about giant Pacific octopus, because that's the octopus that we think of as octopus here. And that's the uh, species that uh, you folks have on display right outside this auditorium. Uh, I'm going to talk about how deep they live and other natural history uh, aspects of octopuses. Uh, what do they eat? Who eats them? Life history. Death at an early age. Because they live at, because they die at three years old, is that dying at an early age? eggs, and uh, I want to talk about senescence, is, which is what uh, octopus old age is. Well, you may have noticed that I use the term octopuses, not octopi. And uh, there's a reason for that, and the reason most scientists nowadays are using the term octopuses for the plural, because uh, Octopus is really from a Greek root that means uh, eight arms. And actually it means eight legs or, or eight feet, but um, we use the term arms for the, the appendages of octopuses. And we use the term tentacles for the two long food catching uh, arms of, of squid and cuttlefish. Uh, squid and cuttlefish are sometimes called decapods, ten. They have ten appendages, but they have eight arms and two tentacles. Although uh, we have, uh, this, this talk is obviously arranged for, for Puget Sound area, because that's where I'm from. Uh, we have, have two main species, and here you have two main shallow water species. Uh, the giant Pacific octopus, GPO, which is the world's largest species, and I'll get into that in just a minute, how, how big do they get. And the little red octopus, which gets about a foot across, spread out. Those are in shallow water, and you folks down here have, have several other deeper water species that are actually pretty interesting. Uh, one of them is called the flapjack devilfish. And, and they're sometimes called jellyfish octopus. And they're about a thousand feet deep off your coast here. Uh, 
Nobody's ever kept them alive, by the way. Not even Monterey Aquarium. And they've kept everything. <laughs> Some of you know, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> well, how big do octopuses get? I think that's, that's another of the uh, uh, big questions that people ask me. Uh, they certainly don't get big enough to pull ships down in spite of movies that you might see. Uh, this octopus we called Mr. Big at the Seattle Aquarium. Uh, that's me, much younger. I had a little bit more hair then, but not too much. Uh, 95 pounds, pretty good size. Uh, I've sort of been collecting different uh, a funny screen came up here. Maybe I can get rid of it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Uh, I've been collecting various pictures and reports of big octopuses. Uh, this was supposedly 210 pounds, collected in the 1930s in the Tacoma Narrows. And I apologize for the uh, quality of the print. <coughs> But uh, that's the way photographing was back in those days. So I don't necessarily believe that that was actually 210 pounds. Uh, some of the problems with these archival photographs is that you don't really know if they were accurately weighed or not. Uh, those of you who are into aquariums know Murray Newman's book. Murray Newman was the uh, first director at the Vancouver Aquarium. And uh, he was notable, notice, notable because there have only been two directors at the Vancouver Aquarium since 1956 when it opened. I don't know how many directors the Oregon Coast Aquarium has had, but I bet it's more than two. Bruce? About five. Yeah. Seattle Aquarium, I think, has had six or seven permanent directors and three or four temporary directors. Vancouver Aquarium, since 1956, has had two directors. And the founding director was Murray Newman, who wrote the book, My Life in a Fishbowl. And he tells uh, about some commercial octopus fishermen up in, in uh, British Columbia that uh, talked about several over 400 pounds. Again, these were not actually weighed. One was estimated at 600 pounds, supposedly because he, it filled a, a 50 gallon drum. Uh, and they converted octopus, or they converted 50 gallons to pounds, uh, supposedly. Uh, I talked to Marie Newman about this, and uh, he claims that he was writing with his tongue in his cheek about, about this, that uh, he didn't really believe that they were that this big, although that didn't really come across in his book. But again, these animals were not actually weighed. Um, I got this from Eric Kochberg down in Santa Barbara. He's an, he's an octopus expert. Uh, this was a postcard from 1945. Uh, this octopus was supposedly 403 pounds. Now, that's probably a pretty big guy, but uh, I frankly, I just don't believe that this animal was 403 pounds. Uh, you saw the photograph that I had earlier of Mr. Big at 95 pounds. This octopus doesn't look any bigger to me than that was. People have a tendency to, to uh, exaggerate the sizes of octopuses. This octopus was actually weighed. Uh, 
I believe it was 1957, and it weighed 146 pounds. Uh, notice how thick the arms are. It's quite a large animal. Uh, doesn't have long, skinny arms. It has thick, stout arms. Uh, good size, good sized animal. The largest one that I know that was actually weighed was 156 pounds. Turned out to be 71 kilograms, uh, if you're into to the metric system. This was weighed by a scientist that was working on octopuses. Uh, there's another scientist down in New Zealand that uh, claims to have found a larger species. Uh, he called his the colossal octopus. However, no one has ever found a larger species of octopus than 156 pounds. The biggest one that he found was 70 kilograms. Uh, he claims it wasn't uh, uh, fully mature yet, so it would obviously have to get bigger than that. However, uh, he has not found a larger animal than 156 pounds. So, giant Pacific octopus is the world's largest species of octopus so far. And that's the one we have here on the west coast. Well, uh, the little red octopus ranges from California to southeast Alaska. Again, as I mentioned, it gets about a foot across. It's much smaller than, than a giant Pacific octopus. Giant Pacific octopus ranges around the Pacific Ocean from Japan to Alaska and down to Southern California. Uh, it only gets to about 1,000 feet deep, uh, so it doesn't range across the North Pacific into the middle. It just ranges around the shoreline of the Northern Pacific Ocean. Giant Pacific octopus and many other octopuses live in a den, uh, especially uh, the shallow water octopuses. Uh, I like to say that, that octopuses are good housekeepers because they keep their den uh, meticulously clean. They blow out dirt and carry out rocks from a, a den under a rock or between rocks. <laughs> Uh, some different species of octopuses even uh, make dens in mud or sand, and they probably coagulate the walls of, the, of their den with mucus to hold it together and keep it from collapsing. Um, I think we all know that there are movies where it shows octop big octopuses living in uh, man-made uh, structures such as shipwrecks, and indeed they do. Sometimes, of course, they're not monsters, and uh, that's, they just like to hide in, in uh, structures, uh, sunken structures, uh, uh, under docks, in human, in human uh, uh, rubble that's on the bottom. Well, octopuses may be good housekeepers. They keep their dens clean, but uh, they have a messy yard because they throw their garbage out in front of their den. And we call that a midden. Uh, after the, uh, the midden of the, the Native Americans, largely made out of shells. So you can usually tell what an octopus is eating by looking at its midden and seeing what kind of shells there are in it. This little giant Pacific octopus is uh, living in a, in a small clamshell, about four inches. Uh, do you see the eye between the shells? I have another photograph of this octopus sitting out in front of its shell den. And uh, I think people like I, I like this photograph a lot because it, it shows that even octopuses can be cute. Uh, this one is, you know, maybe a size of a cup, and uh, I think it's kind of a cute little octopus. But it's going to grow up big. 
Uh, red octopuses like to live in, in our beer bottles down on the bottom, so they have a good habitat. They, they have a, a, a good supply of dens. Uh, they also live in clam shells, just like giant Pacific octopuses do. Uh, this octopus in the beer bottle is under the, uh, the orange sea anemone. I did a study on these a while ago. Uh, I found that red octopuses keep their middens inside their, their beer bottle dens in Puget Sound area. And I, I speculated that probably doesn't uh, let other animals that might eat the octopus know where, where the octopus is uh, by looking at their midden pile. Uh, I also found out that, that uh, red octopuses like stubby beer bottles better than long necks and that they like actually like brown beer bottles much better than green or clear beer bottles. Uh, this octopus, uh, we actually cleaned the beer bottle a little bit for photographic purposes. And, and besides that, the octopus is living under the, uh, under the sea anemone. Here you can see a little red octopus crawling out of its beer bottle den demonstrating that they, uh, they can squeeze through small spaces. Well, what do octopuses eat? Uh, favorite food of most species, at least in the shallow waters that we know of, is live crabs. But they eat a lot of other types of animals. They eat crabs, clams, snails, fish, fresh carrion, and small sharks. Uh, there, if you Google octopus eats shark, you'll see a, a video at the, filmed at the Seattle Aquarium of an, uh, about a 40 pound octopus eating a dogfish shark, catching and eating. And uh, this was part of a nature show called uh, The Octopus Show that was filmed uh, about 10 years or so ago. Octopuses eat sculpins. Uh, at the Seattle Aquarium, we try to have other animals in with our octopus to make it more interesting, like sculpins. But, uh, and we try to keep the octopuses well fed. But uh, you can see that they, they do eat fish other than the, the food that we actually give them, rockfish. And, uh, um, this was actually a picture taken from National Geographic, I think in 1993, article by, and uh, photographs by Fred Bavendam. And there's a, a bit of story about this. Uh, you can see that there might be a bite in the, uh, the dogfish already. Actually, this was filmed under a fishing dock and uh, the fishermen at that time, when there were more dogfish around, did not like to catch dogfish. So they stabbed the dogfish, killed them, and threw them back in the water. And what this demonstrates is actually the giant Pacific octopus uh, uh, does feed on, on fresh carrion. So uh, it scavenges. What by the way, notice that, that bright red color. Uh, the little red octopus is mostly a muddy brown color rather than that red of a giant Pacific octopus. Good way to tell them apart. Uh, if an octopus is bigger than a pound or so, it's almost certainly a giant Pacific octopus. But uh, little red octopuses can get uh, a bit larger than you might expect also. Well, what eats giant Pacific octopus? And uh, at the Seattle Aquarium, we have a research program going on on six gill sharks uh, right at the aquarium, which is on the waterfront of Seattle's Harbor. And we've found that we can uh, draw in six gill sharks uh, about 50 feet deep at night and uh, we're doing a, uh, a research project on 
on six gill sharks. I think it's the broad nose six gill shark. And uh, we've filmed and tagged a number of these. You can see the tag on this shark. Uh, and uh, we have gotten these sharks that were up to 12 feet in Seattle's harbor. You just don't think of, of uh, these big sharks in, in the cold water. You think of great white sharks, of course. But 12 feet, feet is a pretty good sized animal. And uh, they are considered to be an octopus predator because octopuses have been found in shark stomachs. Well, cute fuzzy sea otters. Uh, you've got sea otters over at the aquarium next door here. Um, Seattle Aquarium has always been associated with sea otters, but sea otters love to eat octopuses. And uh, cute and fuzzy though they may be, they, they eat my favorite animals, so I'm, uh, I don't know. They've got a dark and dirty past. <clears throat> Same with harbor seals. I like harbor seals. Fat, cute, personalities like dogs. But they eat octopuses. Uh, I don't eat octopus. I think they're kind of bland, actually. I have tried them. Uh, sea lions eat octopuses. And surprisingly, killer whales eat octopuses. And, and some of the stranded dead killer whales that have washed up, not very many of them, of course, but uh, some of them have had octopuses inside of them, inside their stomach. I personally think that uh, the killer whales are probably eating old senescent octopuses. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about senescence later. Well, I want to talk a little bit about life history. And uh, believe it or not, I am going to talk about how smart are octopuses. I'm going to get to it. But I just want to set the stage here and tell you a bit about octopus life history. Octopuses do mate. Uh, the male has a mating organ on the end of his third right arm. And he passes a spermatophore packet into the female. Each packet holds about 8 billion sperm. A mating takes about 4 hours. A uh, female has two uh, oviducts, so there could be two matings, 4 hours each. Male then, there's no such thing as safe sex, I like to say, because both of them are going to die after they mate. The male takes about two months, and he goes into a, uh, an old age that we call senescence, where he stops eating, he develops white sores, uh, and he goes wandering around aimlessly. He doesn't hunt food, he doesn't hide in a den. So senescence, uh, similar to human Alzheimer's, but a, a friend of mine, a colleague who studies Alzheimer's disease says octopus senescence is not a disease. All octopuses we know of will go into senescence. And we all know that we all don't get Alzheimer's disease. Thank goodness. Uh, there are, are un, lots of people who are 100 years old that don't have Alzheimer's. Uh, and they, they have all their smarts and more power to them. But uh, the females, after uh, she mates with a male, uh, puts on some body weight for a couple of months. And she goes into a den and lays strings of eggs from the roof of the den. And she guards them for six to eight months until the eggs hatch. She keeps sea stars away from the eggs. And the interesting thing about this is that the female does not eat in that six to eight months. She shrinks to about half her size. And uh, uh, 
She lives off protein metabolism because octopuses don't have any fat. Uh, so think of that, six to eight months without eating, <coughs> keeping the eggs clean and safe. She's a dedicated mother, I think. Uh, and just about a little bit after the eggs hatch, as if she knows, she doesn't know, but uh, you know, it's very closely timed, she dies. And if she dies before the eggs hatch, the eggs don't survive. This has been documented by people that watch uh, females that are guarding eggs. And uh, if a female dies or it gets taken by humans, the eggs don't survive. They don't hatch. They get eaten. Uh, lifespan uh, is three to four years. Uh, Another question that people ask me all the time is, why do they die so young? And of course, you know, this is kind of unusual because uh, we think that octopuses are fairly intelligent and uh, they're non-social. They don't get together and have tea parties together. Uh, but uh, they die at three to four years at the end of their natural lifespan. And this, of course, is not dying young. This is their, their normal lifespan. They uh, uh, live a, a, a good, long life for an octopus. It's just that they die sooner than we do, or sooner than we think they should. Uh, we all know about mayflies that die af after a day or two as an adult, or, or uh, uh, cicadas that die, well, they're, they're larvae for 17 years, they come out and mate, and then they die. Uh, and octopuses are like that. They, uh, uh, there's, there's no um, maternal or paternal caring of the young. The female guards the eggs until they hatch. The, the uh, young octopuses go off into the, the plankton and feed off, off little crustaceans in the plankton. And uh, the female, as I said, dies. So there's no reason. And, and they only, only lay eggs once, this species of octopus. There are one or two species of octopus that, that may have an extended egg laying process over, over, over several weeks at least. But giant Pacific octopuses only lay eggs once. Female guards them till they hatch, and then they die. Uh, this is sort of like salmon. I think we're all familiar with the salmon life cycle, where they grow up out in the ocean, come back to lay eggs, and then they die. Uh, the female salmon doesn't take care of, of the uh, the, the eggs and they don't ca take care of the, the juvenile salmon. So uh, I, I like to compare octopus to salmon. Let's see. Giant Pacific octopus with eggs. There, uh, eggs are usually hung from the ceiling of, of a den, female dens, female's den. And uh, they're, they're tied together in strings called festoons. So there may be several hundred eggs in each festoon, and there may be several hundred uh, strings. So altogether, there are usually 70,000 to 100,000 eggs. People, well, another question people ask me all the time is, how many survive? Well, we don't know, because it's really hard to track a tiny little baby octopus floating in the plankton. You can't mark them. Uh, it's hard to know uh, where, where these young octopuses come from. They can be caught sometimes in plankton nets. But the answer to that question 
has to be to survive because they have to replace the mother and the father octopus. On average, on average, if you look at the whole population, uh, only two need survive from each batch of baby octopuses. Maybe 70,000 will hatch and go into the plankton, but most of them die or get eaten. And uh, we know this is true because uh, if more than that were surviving, the population as a whole would be increasing, and it's not. And if fewer than two survived, on average over the whole population of giant Pacific octopuses, if fewer survived, then the population would be decreasing. And right now we have no indication of that. So. On average, only two survive, enough to replace the mother and the father. Octopuses are, are I think, well known for their color changing ability. They have little cells in their skin that open and close and show different colors. And they can, this is all controlled by the brain. And, uh, they can change colors in less than a second. It's actually a, uh, parts of a millisecond. So they change colors. They have a, a pretty good repertoire of, of, of colors. They choose from yellow, black, red, orange. Uh, they also have uh, iridophores, which don't actually show color. They, they, uh, show an iridescence, which can be kind of a blue or purple color. And they have leucophores, which if they open and close, show white. So octopuses can be totally white or totally red, depending on uh, which cells they open in their skin. Octopuses have, have a hard, horny beak, which is their only hard part, so they can squeeze through uh, very small openings, usually considered to be the size of their beak. Giant Pacific octopuses have a beak that's, you know, maybe two walnuts in size. Uh, usually considered to be about the same as their, their inner eyeball. Uh, it's hard, it's made of chitin. It's, uh, they can use the beak actually to crush clam shells, even some very heavy clam shells. So, uh, it has some, some very stout muscles. Uh, octopuses can bite humans. Um, I think Val Hodges had to, to leave today, but she, when she was working at Alaska, got a good photograph of a human that was bitten by a giant Pacific octopus. And it was quite a scary bite. Uh, it wasn't envenomated. Octopuses, all octopuses have venom. Giant Pacific octopuses seemed kind of uh, uh, loath. They, they don't uh, seem willing to, to bite and inject venom. Little red octopus is really quite venomous. Uh, it bites and injects the venom. Uh, I wrote up a, a, the story of an octopus bite by a Seattle Aquarium employee. He was on the beach with a bunch of kids doing an outreach program. Some divers brought up uh, uh, some shells and other animals and included was a, a moon snail shell and a little red octopus crawled out. Uh, this employee knew better than to handle the octopus barehanded, especially a red octopuses which are very prone to biting and they have a bad bite. Um, he tried to pick up the octopus to show the kids with his gloved hand and the octopus swam over to his ungloved hand and bit him on top of the wrist. Well, this was at a state park uh, close to Seattle, 20 miles away. And he, was, he, was, he knew he got bitten, but he didn't want to make a big thing of it because he was the, the teacher of this, this class of little kids. And uh, 
But he got worried when he was starting to get paralysis and swelling, working up his arm, and fiery pain, along with the paralysis. So he thought he'd better do something about this. So he called the aquarium, and we recommended that he put hot water on the bite site, which is the, uh, the accepted first aid for in envenomated bites nowadays, especially octopuses. Good for, for wasps, too, by the way. Um, so uh, this being Seattle, of course, we had a nearby espresso stand. <laughs> and I don't know if it was Starbucks or not, but he put some, some uh, hot water on, on the bite, and the, uh, the swelling went down, the pain went away, did the paralysis. Well, after he got done with the class, he went to Harborview Hospital, that's our local trauma center. They called the aquarium, too. And, uh, uh, of course, we told them, uh, put hot water on it. Well, he had a few blisters from the hot water he put on it. It was better than the paralysis, I guess. And they, they put a, a, you know, a salve on it and uh, sent him home. You know, after, after, at the end of the day, you know, he had a puncture wound. It was kind of red around it, but uh, the paralysis, the pain, and the swelling all went down. But to show you how bad this bite really is, he had dizzy spells for a week after that. These are not good animals to have bite you. Um, I, I can't emphasize enough that, that red octopus especially don't handle them without gloves. Be very wary. Giant Pacific octopuses don't seem very prone to biting. Although I would never let my hand get close to the beak. Their beaks are strong. I, th I think they could probably break a finger if they got your finger in their beak. But little red octopuses don't handle them. Use a net. Well, octopuses also have ink as a, a defense, and they can either make a cloud of ink or a blob of ink, depending on how much mucus they put in it. Uh, ink largely is made of melanin, a, a very black substance. And uh, those of you who have, have kept octopuses in an aquarium and if the octopuses have inked in the aquarium, you know it, they can put, a, put out a prodigious amount of ink. Uh, sometimes the ink actually holds together and it looks like a, a, a phantom octopus. And this is obviously a defense because the, the octopus will churn pale and jet away. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about octopus senescence. Uh, I wrote a paper oh, 10 years ago about this. Uh, senescence is simply octopus old age. They develop white spots, which are sores. Uh, they do get bacteria in these sores, and numerous aquarists have taken samples from these white lesions and found bacteria and think that they, if they uh, kill the bacteria, the octopus will get better. But it turns out that uh, the octopus is going through old age and all of its systems are going down, including its uh, uh, immune system. So uh, the bacteria that are in these sores or injuries are, are secondary bacteria infections. And it isn't going to do any good to get rid of the bacteria because as part of the bigger process of aging in octopuses. I mentioned that octopuses lose their appetite and they actually don't eat. So that can be one of the reasons uh, uh, an older, larger octopus stops eating. And they develop this wanderlust. Uh, they don't seem to know what they're doing. They uh, just wander around aimlessly and uh, eventually they get eaten, probably. And I think that's probably how an animal like a killer whale 
could catch an octopus. Because I just don't see how an octopus that has the ability to camouflage against the bottom or hide in a den could get eaten by a killer whale or a large shark or, or even a sea lion. Uh, but if an octopus is going through senescence and is out wandering around, it exposes itself to danger. Exposes itself to getting eaten by, by killer whales and seals and other animals. Well, I got you in here, wanted to tell you about how smart octopuses are. And uh, we don't actually know too much about that. There's lots, of, lots to be learned. Uh, it would be nice if we had a, a standardized test to give octopuses, an IQ test, so to speak. Well, the problem is that IQ tests don't work very well, and, uh, and even with humans, there are different cultures that aren't used to taking tests. And, and a lot of cultures, uh, lots of different human cultures, uh, just don't take tests well. So it's hard to, to say that they are, are, are how smart they are. Uh, plus the fact that we're talking about 150 different species of octopuses, and they're all different in some way. So if you de were to develop an IQ test for an octopus, which is very, very problematic in itself, uh, that would only apply to one species. So IQ test isn't going to do it. Well, what about brain size? Well, if we look at actual brain size of an octopus, uh, a researcher back in the 70s, Martin Wells, claimed that uh, the common octopus of England had 68 million neurons in its brain. Now remember, this is only measured in one species of, of octopus. But it, just compare that to humans, which have 100 billion neurons in their brains. I mean, it's pretty obvious that we're smarter than octopuses are. But there, there, are, uh, there are circumstances that, that complicate things. Uh, octopuses have about half of their neurons in their arms. Uh, and the arms are, are self-directed. Uh, arms go moving around without having to be directed by the brain. Uh, we know that because back in the 60s and 70s, Researchers would cut off an octopus arm, which we wouldn't do nowadays, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, and, and the cut off arm would go crawling around by itself. I'm going to take a minute here and I have some water. <clears throat> I'm not sick, I've just got old age cough, I guess. <laughs> so, um, well, if you consider about half of the octopus's neurons are in its brain, you might think that it might have 120 million, 130 million neurons total. That's still a couple of orders of magnitude below a human. <clears throat> well, another way of looking at it would be uh, to compare the brain size to the body size. We, now, we all know, have all heard, that dinosaurs had brains that are about the size of a walnut. And I'm not so sure about that. Um, you know, these big uh, 
uh, plant-eating dinosaurs. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Might have had a brain the size of, of a walnut, but uh, nobody ever says, how big a brain does a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex have? Uh, if you have seen the movie uh, uh, Jurassic Park, uh, you might think that Tyrannosauruses are, are, are smarter than that, or some of these other predatory dinosaurs. Well, and, and then there's the, the problem of giant Pacific octopuses again. Giant Pacific octopuses have brains about the size of a walnut. Uh, the uh, common octopus has a brain smaller than the marble. Does that mean that giant Pacific octopuses are smarter than common octopuses? Which is the, the most studied species of octopus. Common octopuses live in uh, tropical waters that are brightly colored. Uh, and there are a lot of predators in tropical waters. Lots of fish like to eat octopuses. Uh, it's not just moray eels. It's a lot of other fish. And a lot of their smarts might be devoted to avoiding getting eaten. Probably so. But if we look at actual comparison of brain size to body size, octopuses come out pretty good, actually. Uh, and I don't have any actual figures for that, but I, I have looked into this and read about it. Uh, octopuses are smarter than, than uh, earthworms. Uh, they're smarter than oysters, which they're related to. <coughs> Consider it an oyster is a good mollusk, just like an octopus is. Um, oysters just sit there and filter water, and uh, they spawn once in a while. Of course, the interesting thing about oysters is they change sex once in a while. Uh, octopus can't do that, but uh, uh, oysters do. But octopuses are smarter than, than uh, some vertebrates, even. Even They're smarter than amphibians. They're smarter than reptiles, which, of course, uh, dinosaurs were. They're smarter than fish. And uh, they're smarter than about half of the birds. Uh, I don't think that octopuses are smarter than crows. Crows are, are really pretty smart birds. And we all know about, uh, uh, was it Max the parrot that was so smart? Alex the parrot could actually learn uh, uh, some human language. Octopuses aren't that smart. Well, we don't have a test, and uh, it's hard to know how to compare um, brain size. But uh, what we can do is look at what octopuses can do. They can learn simple mazes. Uh, turn right at the first corner and left at the second corner to get that piece of, of herring that's on the bottom. They can learn to do that. Octopuses have handedness. They are either left-handed or right-handed, and they are either left-eyed or right-eyed. Octopuses uh, mainly use one eye or the other to, uh, to look out at, at, uh, at their world. Octopuses have personality. Uh, I was the first to write about that back in 1993, Journal of Comparative Psychology. And uh, I was uh, inspired by the fact that our volunteers always named the octopuses at the Seattle Aquarium. And it was only the marine mammals that got names uh, among the other animals at the aquarium. And so uh, I, I thought, well, why are these volunteers coming up with these names? 
We had uh, an octopus named Leisure Suit Larry after a uh, video game. And Leisure Suit Larry would have been arrested for, for inappropriate touching. Uh, we had Emily Dickinson, the notoriously shy poet. And Emily Dickinson, the octopus, went behind her backdrop. And she only lived in about a two inch wide space behind the backdrop. She was very two dimensional. She didn't, she didn't like being on display. She wasn't a good animal for that. She wasn't a good personality to be on display. And then we had Ursula, uh, named after the sea witch in The Little Mermaid. Remember Ursula, the sea witch? Ursula in the movie was actually a squid, but uh, Ursula the octopus was just evil. Uh, she tore apart her tank, and I had to fix it. Um, one morning, she pulled out the, uh, the under gravel filter. She bit off bit the, the nylon cable ties holding it together. So in the morning, I, I came in and found pieces of the under gravel filter floating on the surface. I was, was not a happy camper. <clears throat> Evil animal. <laughs> but I have to chuckle because I gave it, I gave that octopus to another aquarium. <laughs> and they never knew. Well, octopuses have demonstrated play behavior, and uh, uh, I published on that. And uh, what they do is uh, they use their siphon to blow, they use their siphon to blow floating objects around in their tank so that they would, the objects would go in a circle in the water current or back and forth. And this is just like a child bouncing a ball. And they did this for extended periods. Uh, octopus, my colleague Jennifer Mather published a, a paper on how octopuses use tools. And they, they do this in a couple of ways. They use rocks as a door to block up the entrance of their den. And they also use water as a tool to blow out their dens. As I told you, they were good housekeepers. They keep their dens clean by blowing water and blowing all the, the sand and rocks out from their den. And this was fit the, the definition of tool use. Again, Jennifer Mather found that octopuses use landmark navigation. Uh, when they go foraging for food, they can go in a triangle out of sight of their den they can go in a triangle and jet directly back to the den without seeing it. But they use landmark navigation. Um, this is perhaps not quite so, so advanced as you might think because uh, bees use landmark navigation uh, when they tell other bees where this particularly juicy patch of flowers is. Uh, bees do communicate with each other, and they can tell uh, by, by wiggling uh, and the direction and how far away the, uh, the flowers are. Well, um, I tried to, to look and see if, if uh, octopuses recognize themselves in mirrors, and it turns out they don't. Uh, they see another octopus. Uh, I'm trying to get that paper in publication. Uh, do octopuses recognize individual humans? Yes, and that is a published paper. They do. Uh, I used a good cop, bad cop scenario where one person would touch an octopus with a bristly stick and the octopus learned to, to learn to, that that person was coming with a bristly stick and without even touching it, it would blow water jets at that person and it, or it would shrink back into the, uh, the back of the tank and turn its suckers out tor towards that person. 
And then there was a good cop who, who, whenever he or she opened the tank, would give the octopus a herring, food. And uh, this octopus would, would never squirt water jets at that person, would come up to the top of the tank, approach that person, and move, and even move arms up to that person as if it expected food from that person. <coughs> Some birds hoard food. Crows, I, I've been watching crows a lot lately. If they're fed a lot, they'll take some of their food and stash it away. So uh, I wondered whether octopuses can do that. I, I think we have to say maybe, because sometimes octopuses hold a whole bunch of different crabs. And that's short-term food storage, short-term food hoarding. Emotions, maybe. We think that bright red is mad, and white is fearful. But nobody's studied that in particular yet. That is, remains yet to be done. We do know that octopuses sleep. They go to a particular spot to sleep. They turn gray, their muscles relax, and, and their, their breathing is uh, slowed down. So uh, it's, we, it's pretty good. Uh, notion that octopuses do sleep. These are all sort of indications of what kind of octopus intelligence there is. I mentioned emotions. Is this octopus mad? I, it was getting flashed by a flash photography and they, they sometimes turn bright red when that happens. I think it's probably mad. Well, uh, I, I see I've about uh, come to the end of my time here. Uh, this is my version of an octopus sunset. So um, if you have any questions, I'm going to come down and sit down here. And uh, I guess I'll turn this microphone off, except I can't figure out how to do it. Because it doesn't matter. So if, thank you.